In a previous episode, we looked at how poly could be used to do retries. But sometimes we want to do something a little bit more complicated than just retrying three times. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. In today's episode we're going to expand a little bit on what we looked at a couple of episodes ago in relation to Polly. Uh, so if you missed that episode I'll link it down below. Uh, but otherwise let me give you a quick recap that Polly is a library uh, coming out of, I, I always want to say that it's like coming out of Carl Franklin, but it's coming out of Carl Franklin's company. Uh, sponsored by them, but an open source project that allows you to set up retry policies and basically transient error handling blocks for your application. Uh, so in our last episode, we basically did this. Uh, we just set up a policy that retried a problem three times and hoped that it would go away. So this happens quite a bit. Uh, you might see kind of network errors or database deadlocks or something like that where the easiest way to solve the problem is just to do it again. Uh, and I know that might be the definition of insanity, but that's sort of the way things work in computers sometimes. Uh, so if we were to execute this really simple policy here, uh, we would get something that looked like this. Uh, so we're just throwing an SQL exception inside of our project here. Uh, and I'm gonna just ignore this type of exception, this project, just to, to speed us along a little bit. Uh, I don't want everything to break every time we hit it. Uh, so you can see here uh, that we've gone through and printing out hello world every time, but from time to time we have these exceptions here. So we have an SQL exception there and there. Uh, but for the most part, being able to retry this thing three times pretty much solves our problem. Of course, there's a couple of problems with this approach. The first one is that we are just pounding this server. Uh, so we're not giving it any chance for these deadlocks to resolve themselves really, except by immediately retrying. And depending on how this condition is set up, like what sort of exception we're getting here, uh, we might just be making the problem even worse than it used to be. So there's a couple of things that we can do around this policy to improve it. Uh, the first thing we can do is we can start taking a look at filtering the exceptions that we're handling here. So right now we're just looking at anything that is an SQL exception, we're gonna retry three times. Uh, now, not every SQL exception is going to solve itself uh, through simple retry. In fact, the vast majority of your SQL exceptions are going to be something that is not fixable with a retry. So uh, you've given it uh, keys that don't work. You've given it badly shaped SQL. You've given it strings that are too long for a field. Any of these things are not going to be solved with a retry. Uh, but there is a certain class of problem that is nicely solvable with retry. So one of them is this 1205 error number that we get back from SQL Server. So that is a deadlock. There's a couple of others in here, sort of like 1204, 1206, uh, which are kind of ones you might want to retry. I don't have a complete list of what numbers would be good, but I'll bet you that the internet does have that list somewhere. Uh, so let's just go in here and just filter and make sure that we're only catching these exceptions. So we have this handle clause in our policy here that filters for SQL exceptions. We're going to be even more specific here and we're going to throw a lambda in here. We're going to say x dot, oops, x dot number is equal to 1205 uh, and probably don't just leave a magic number like that, but we'll do it for now. Uh, so that's going to only retry SQL exceptions, which are of a class that we think we can get away with retrying. Uh, the next thing that we want to do is change our retry here to something else. So there's actually another policy here that we can use called wait and retry. Uh, so this takes a couple of different overloads. Well, a couple being 12, uh, which is quite a few. Uh, so there's basically kind of like two major classes here that you can give it. So you can either give it a list of specific timeouts that you want to wait for, or you can give it uh, some code that generates that list for you. Uh, so we'll give it just maybe like a new list of timeouts here, or time spans here, time span, uh, and we'll just give it time span dot from seconds. I'll give it a second the first time through. Uh, time span from seconds to time span dot from seconds three. And we could continue going there. So this is gonna do our three retries again, but this time with some different timeouts associated with them. Uh, now, one of the things you might want to consider doing here is using some random numbers in here. 
uh, instead of just putting hard coded values in there. And the idea there is if you have two processes that are following the same policy and they deadlock, then they both go to sleep for a second, they wake up again and they both retry again. Well, they're going to hit the same deadlock again and again and again because they have the same policies. So introducing some randomness in there uh, can really improve how well that works. Uh, so let's give this a try here. Yeah. Uh, we'll just run this application again. It's probably gonna be a little bit slower this time because we've got some longer timeouts in there. And we'll see what comes back here. So now we're actually able to see this because we can see that we're hitting these same exceptions here and we're doing some retries and we're stepping back from these retries. So that's pretty good there. Okay, great. So that's handled our transient errors here, but now we might want to handle uh, some other errors that we get from this application. Well, we, I guess it's handled our retrieval ones here. So let's set up another policy here, uh, and we're going to have this one provide a fallback for us. So the idea here being that if this execution doesn't work, we want to do something else. Uh, so right now this thing's just returning hello world to us. Uh, but maybe we want to like go back to a different source for our data or we want to save this data in a different location or something like that as part of our retry policy here. So let's put a fallback retry, a fallback policy, I guess it would be here. And we'll do policy dot. Uh, sorry, we need to have a type here. So let's give this a string policy dot handle uh, and we're going to handle SQL exceptions here again uh, exceptions uh, and we'll just handle all the rest of those SQL exceptions so we'll just put a lambda in here and we'll just do x dot number bad at getting lambdas today x dot number does not equal to 1205 uh, in which case we're going to fall back uh, and we just give it here the value that we want to fall back to, and we'll say that is um, hello planet. Okay. So now we have that policy set up too. This is going to be our fallback policy. We have our retry policy here. Uh, now we need to combine these two together into a policy that we use. Uh, so a while ago, uh, this was introduced into Poly. I think this came in version five that we have the ability to kind of combine and wrap policies together. Uh, so that can be done either here when you're setting up the initial policy or we can do it down here too. So we can actually just do policy.wrap. Uh, and then give it our other policy, which is going to be our fallback policy. Spelled properly, of course. Uh, so now we're going to be able to either have this fallback or this other exception here. Uh, so right now our exception generator only generates numbers 1205 here. So let's just throw another statement in here. Uh, and we'll have this generate another number, let's say 1009. I don't know what that exception is, but we'll just throw it. Um, let's just add to our comments here that we print out. All right. Uh, so now when we go and execute this, oh, looks like I have an error there. What did I mess up there? Uh, so what I messed up here is that this original policy here, it doesn't actually return anything. Uh, it just prints stuff out. Uh, so let's just go and change our code a little bit here. So it looks like this. And we'll put our console right line out here. And this string here. Okay, let's give that a try and see how that looks. All right, so you can see going through the code here, we've hit both these different kinds of exceptions. Uh, so when we hit 12.05, we get retries. Uh, when we hit 1009, we don't retry, we just switch back to, to sending out 
our fallback string. So this is a particularly good example right here because we hit 1205, 1205 on our next retry, we hit 1009 and we switch back to sending hello planet instead of hello world. Uh, so this is how you build slightly more complicated policies using poly. Uh, so in our next episode related to poly, we're going to continue on taking a look at this stuff and we'll continue expanding on some of the more powerful features inside of poly. Great. So thanks everybody for joining today. Remember to like, comment, and share, and we'll see everybody on next week's episode. Bye.